um, just out of curiosity, I had a, it, it's kind of a fun photo. What, um, who edits their own podcasts? Okay. So of those, I'll show you this in a second. Of those, what is this? <laughs> um, yes, um, I thought it'd be so fun to make a to make a T-shirt and go around and people ask about it, and then you get into describing, you know, oh, it's about podcasting, you know, uh, kind of an easy in, especially this one. That that's that's my um, so <laughs> kind of a fun fun little thing. So. Um, so we can, I'll, I'll go ahead and get started here. I'm going to, how many have actually used Tweet Jukebox and know about this? So Kim, only because I told you about it. Yes. But <laughs> so, so good. So this is going to be a totally new experience. And I'm going to go over also a little bit um, of how to use it and the benefits of it. And, but first I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Sharon Merrill, and I have the uh, podcast it's called the UU Perspective, and this is about Unitarian Universalists, and we are a faith organization, and we're all about social justice, environmental justice, any of the justices, we're kind of that future thinking faith. And so I interview individuals who tell about their experiences and how they're out there changing the world. And so we get some really, really interesting uh, guests that come on the show, and and spread the word so that other people can get involved in making a difference. And also, what I do, I do this for fun, and my actual job is I own a music store, and it's in Lakewood, Ohio. It's just a little western suburb of Cleveland. And that is a, that's a lot of where um, I'm going to kind of tell you from that and doing the podcast, my, the social media scheduling platforms, what I'm not satisfied with, and how it affected me where I went to using this tweet jukebox. Um, so if we go through, and we ask what, what's popular? So what are some of you, what have you used before with scheduling platforms? Hootsuite. Hootsuite, what else? Sweet Deck. Sweet Deck, what else? Anybody have tried? Um, Upper. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and um, anybody use this one? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, and of these three, and there's one I'll show you in a moment. Hootsuite. I have. Um, I had an intern that I hired, and they were working in for my music store, and I also had it roll over into my podcast too. And I had them scheduling things on there. Well, I found with the free version, it was limited. There was no way that I could, you know, do enough tweets out far enough, and I could not just schedule tweets that were um, of my old episodes and have them continuously kind of recycle to kind of reinvite people to the old episodes. And those, that was the problem. I mean, they, they could do it, but it would be a lot of work over and over again. Okay, for this day, this day, this day, and it was just a big time sucker, really. And I tried the paid version, and the paid version allowed me to do, you know, more platforms so I could do, you know, my, my Twitter account, my LinkedIn account, my Facebook account all at once. So that was fine, but still, again, the scheduling thing, I just couldn't get into scheduling things that would just cycle through and save me time. So then I had a very, and of course, Buffer, I told my intern, hey, I heard about this Buffer thing, go try that one out. So I had to try that. I said, tell me, tell me what you think. And he told me that, oh, it's kind of the same as Hootsuite. It's a little, it's not quite as user friendly. And so, okay, there's no improvement there. You, in fact, it might have been a little bit more limiting than Hootsuite, which meant you had to go to the paid version. And of course, as Kim said, Edgar, that's, you just can't afford it. So then I had another overzealous part-time worker who decided he was going to set up this IFTTT. I was oh, you're going to love this. This is, we'll, we'll be able to schedule out. And I'm like, what is this? Oh, well, I'll show you later. And I had no idea. And over the past few months, I did a lot of traveling. And so I did not look into it. 
and I let them go on a little rampage with it. And I got people saying to me, boy, you sure post a lot. Like, I'm getting, my, my spouse says, I blocked you because you're, you're tweeting and you're <laughs> giving me tweeting too much on Facebook. I'm like, uh, 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 okay. Um, so I told my intern, I said, you know what? Tone down it. Just let's post three times a week, a couple times a day. Okay. So here again, I'm still seeing all these many tweets. One day, 20 Facebook posts went out at the same time in one hour. And I'm like, oh my God. So both of these guys, my intern and my part timer, I said, who did this? And who's Facebook bombing? And not cool. And so my part timer says, oh, sorry, I must have hit the send button. And I'm like, oh, geez. So again, but at that point, I didn't know it was this IFTTT. And I'm like, what the heck does this stand for? And I'm going, I just, I found this logo yesterday, and I'm like, if this, then that. I'm like, oh my God. Okay, I get it now. Because then the other day, again, on Facebook, here are some more 13 hour, five posts, 12 hours, five, five posts, 11, 11 hour, five posts. I'm like, this is crazy. So, what happens with this and why I don't like it? Okay, you can take YouTube, and then if something happens on YouTube, then it will post to Twitter. And if something happens on Twitter, well, then it'll post to Facebook. But then if it happens on Instagram, well, it'll post to Facebook again. So I'm like, okay, no. I said, how can we stop this? And I had to go in, and I erased every single recipe, because this was a recipe for disaster. Talk about Facebook bombing and Twitter bombing. No way. So we go to something that's going to be simple. So we go to Tweet Jukebox, and I really love this platform just for the fact that, first of all, it's made, it's set up very simply. So we've got just basically three areas. You've got your My Jukebox, you have also have scheduled tweets, and then you can look at recent mentions and you can add your jukeboxes. So when we go into looking at the jukeboxes here, you, and we open this tab up, we're going to have up to, if, for the free version, and right now it's free through January. At that point, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I know there was going to be a, a limited free version that, you know, you could post so many tweets, plus then you could have a certain amount of jukeboxes, and right now it's five. So with the five jukeboxes, you can create your own. And if you see here, I have old posts and podcast release. And that's the hugest advantage for us as podcasters. Because now we can create re podcast release. We can do whatever podcast is coming out. We can post like 10 different tweets that are going to go out at scheduled times for a certain number of days. Then after that, what I can do is I can then take, re-download those through an Excel file, which I'll show you in a moment, and then I put them in this jukebox. And a jukebox is basically, we're talking about a folder. It's an easy way to say it's a folder. So, and we get to name them whatever we want, put in whatever we want. So we put them in the old episode, and I have those cycling through, through the whole week. So at this point, I, and we'll look afterwards, I think there's probably, I think about 15 episodes, or no, actually all of them are probably in there now, because I downloaded them. So we've got over, say, 200 different old episode tweets that are cycling through. So then it reminds people, oh, here's another episode that you can take a look at. Look at episode three, if you want to learn about, um, you know, the new Jim Crow laws. So something like that. So what is, so what we can do is we can also, they have free jukeboxes. So, and there's up to, right now there's about 75 free jukeboxes that are inside of this that you can download. So, and you can see some of them right here um, that I tried to uh, download, that I did download. Uh, the initial jukeboxes that Tweet Jukebox had they have one that's uh, 200 quotes, 
That's for free. That's part of your uh, your subscription when you sign up for it. But and, and you can turn these off. You don't have to use them. And then you can also do another one that's a hundred. I believe it's a hundred photos, and it's just photos. And those again, you can download, and those will cycle through the way you want to schedule them. So, and I'll tell you the advantage of those that I've had with that uh, in a moment. So, if now the other thing is also, obviously we have auto scheduling, and that's the big, big time saver. Okay. So, if we're scheduling, we're in these in the post. Say my podcast release the the new ones and then the old posts. Then I am able to be more effective with my reach. Okay, I'm reaching more people with way less effort, and I'm also creating then more interaction. And once I've created that more more interaction, my followers are growing. And what has happened is I have at least fifteen to twenty new followers each week. So. Before, when I was doing it, I would maybe try to post something, and it was a lot of effort to go find things to post. And this way, with just these going out automatically, the, and the photos and the, the uh, quotes, people are now starting to follow. So I get that kind of automatic recognition, and you get followers. So what happens when we want to say create our jukebox. So we can take, and at any time too, we can also, we can keep, when we've created our new jukebox, we can keep this off until we've added all our tweets that we want to add. And up here is our options where we have um, the option of adding, and then we're going to have scheduling and our tweets that we'll add. So if I am making a new one, let's say I make one that's called guest quotes. I'll put that in, and then I can either schedule, I can eventually, my scheduling is going to be just regular scheduling where I'm choosing the day and time, and then I can, or I can do them so that they're either done once and done, or I can say they're good until a certain date. And then also, if I don't want those tweets to repeat after a certain amount of time, if I was doing it like, you know, one every 15 minutes, I can say, okay, after you know, after they are all done, don't repeat those again for seven days. So we have a lot of flexibility here on and a lot of control over what happens to our tweets. So the other big thing, be sure to hit the submit buttons and any of the save buttons on whatever whatever page you're on. Because if you don't, you've totally you've lost them. So it's not an automatic saver once you've written it in. Okay, so now we're gonna go, we're gonna go up to our tweets. How are we gonna load those in? You can manually load them and do one at a time. Or we can take, which would be, that would be just right here, we could add, okay, add a new tweet. But the here's the big advantage: uploading your tweets. So if we take and add them into an Excel sheet. And the big important thing is be sure that you write tweet underscore text so that it recognizes it inside the program. I'm not sure that what it's all behind that, but I do it, so it works. So what we do is we hit that upload tweets, and we're going to get this screen, and all I'm going to do is say choose the file. I'll go in, choose my file, and it downloads, and it goes through this warning, warning, you cannot reverse this, you know, map this, what you're doing, so you just hit yes. Because of course I want to download it. So here I am, I downloaded it, and here's the cool thing. If you've made your tweet too long, it tells you. And it tells you which one is too long. So that, and it loaded all the rest of them now. So I've got this one that's too long. So. Number nine here, oh, okay. I can shorten it up. And usually inside of um, just the, the default, the way the Excel sheets turn out, usually around the K column. You don't want to go too much further than that. So I can go in, short that up, and then I can just manually put it in. 
So the other thing that I get to do too is I can edit, I can add photos to this, which is really nice. So the easy part is I can either hit the set it button and I can add to it, I can change it, and I get to this screen here and I just write in where, what I'm going to have. And I also can choose my file and add a photo here. And again, it'll tell me if it's too long. It's not going to work. So that's just a figure. So now if I go into my scheduling, here's where it becomes automated, where you don't have to think about it after you put it in. So we've got all of these days listed here. And what's nice is these can be, they're on. You can also, when you hit the, the little thumbs, so you can get a thumbs down and have them turn off. But you don't want them to be on during those times. So let's say I flip these on, I turn them on, and whenever I, when the ones that are green, whenever I change as far as the, the time, then automatically it changes these. So I don't have to do these all individually. So right there, that saves me time. So, and, and then the same with my, the, uh, my start time. If I want to, instead of starting on the hour, okay, I'm going to start it at, say, 1.50 a.m. And so then it would change it here, and it would be set up. So as soon as I turn those back to the, the brown or whatever that is, then they're set. And then I can choose to do other days and do certain times and, um, and however many hours or minutes. Now, one thing, if your podcast, if it's something that's, generally seen, let's say in um, the US, and you don't have a reach where you don't need it on at night, then you can go ahead and just have it cycle through, like say from 8 a.m. to uh, 10 p.m. at night. So you can set it up that way, rather than going 24 hours. It doesn't need to go 24 hours. My podcast, I, I reach kind of a worldwide audience, so I want it to go through the middle of the night so that you know it's reaching England when you know it's it's still midnight here, so I wanted to do that 24 hours. So it all just depends on what your reach is and what you want to do with that. Now there's the uh, the scheduled tweets. So under our scheduled tweets, these I have never really actually used this, and I just put this one in just for an example because I do mine all under just the regular jukeboxes and schedule there. So if you have something, let's say that's like I put this in, episode 52, it's one year anniversary of the UU Perspective. Okay, I want that to go out now in uh, the end of February of 2016. So that will go out and it's gonna go out once every five hours. Now, the only thing, and let me say, uh, Tim Fargo, who created this, he is very open to suggestions, and he'll answer you within a day. And with this, I certainly, I, I'm going to ask that he creates a, um, an end time on these. Because once that starts going, okay, I have to remember to go in and stop it. So that's the only kind of little glitch that I'd, I'd say inside of this that I'd like to see some improvement on. So. So we have a way of scheduling tweets, say, if you have a product and you're uh, releasing it, you're launching it. Okay, so now you can do it for, if you've got a week where you have this big launch happening, you can schedule out those tweets for that. And again, you can do the upload, you can put it on an Excel sheet, upload it, and you have it there, and it's automatically just going out. So. And then this, so this is what, um, when you pull this up, when you go to schedule, it looks a little different than just your regular like editing and manually putting, putting in the tweets. Because here now we do have the start date, no end date. We have the time we want it to go, and then we have the frequency. So the frequency can go hours, days, weeks, a year out. You have a lot of choices inside of this. And again, you can choose your file, you can upload a picture, if you're doing an ebook, put the cover in on it, you know, any type of uh, event that you might be doing. And so now, if we go to this very last tab, 
It's recent mentions. And inside of this, we have an, um, I, I'm going to show you actually on my actual Tweet Jukebox account, uh, you get the actual mentions, you see the lists as though you would see it like if you were in uh, Twitter, in the Twitter account, you can see who's responded and what, what they've said. So in this, what's really nice is you, this was done for like um, a seven day period. So these are all the unique users that happen within a seven day period. Now the big deal on here is look at these users and what their reach is. This one. Yeah, senior executive, 12,000 people. So I'm looking at these six right here and going, if I interact with this person, then it's going to make, you know, it's going to reach their followers too. So this is great information to have in your pocket to know who to interact with. So a lot of great information here. And you can, and that was done by using this tab here. If I go to this tab, then I get a graph. I don't look at that a whole lot, but that's just, um, it's just another way of uh, viewing your users. But I really like the, the names. Oh, and also, what's really great is you can click on these and you go right to their account, to their Twitter account. So, so you can uh, find out, you know, make sure that you're following them if you want to, since they've interacted with you. So that's great too. It's like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to follow that, the senior executive advisor there. So, and her and I did have a few interactions online. So it was really, it's really handy with this list. And of course this grows as you, you know, the more you get into it, the more followers you get that are interact with you. Okay. Now, the other thing, and this is totally hidden right here. This, you gotta, you actually click on your logo and this drop down will come. The thank you tweets. This is really cool because Tweet Jukebox is doing this for you. You do not have to do anything. They are taking, every Friday, they're taking your unique interactors and they're sending a thank you to them. And I don't know about you, but when I talk about, you know, it's like, cool. And that's how I found Tweet Jukebox, because I got, it said, top interactor for the week, and, you know, so-and-so wants to thank you for being their top interactor. And it said, via TweetJukebox.com. I'm like, oh, click on it, and that's how I got hooked into this and how I found it. Because I just thought, wow, you, you noticed me. And Sure, I mean, inside of this now, I know that it's, it might be, because if you notice, I can go, I can turn this off, I don't have to use it. But you can do up to 50 users. So if 50 people come up, unique um, users come up, they'll send that thank you out. And it's to the individual person, it's not like it's lumped together. So, so you um, really have an effect on how people feel, and you're getting more kind of creating that little bit of a relationship with them. And they really react to it. And what's cool is I see, they'll retweet that, that they got to be the top interactor. So they either favorite it or they retweet it. So again, it's going out, getting more exposure for your, your brand, your podcast, or blog, or whatever you're doing. So the other thing too, we have, they have, um, there was the menu across the top, top, and they have jukebox store that I was talking about. There are over right now 75 different jukeboxes you can choose from. Now, I have to say that those jukeboxes, because I showed you in the beginning there in my jukebox, there were some different ones in there, and one was called Brainy Quotes, and, uh, and another, there's one that's like 500, you know, 500 quotes that you can use. So you download those. Now you can go through and edit out ones that are not going to fit your audience, which is a good thing. Especially on the ones, there's um, there's some, well, let me just say, there's a lot in there that are photo quotes, and 
unfortunately, the photo quotes, you can't preview them. And they're more um, kind of branding themselves. It's like uh, photo, at, you know, hashtag photo, at, and then the person's name. But you don't see what's on that photo quote. So I did it. I started out within about three hours. I had a couple of them went out. And somebody was offended by one of them. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, I would never send this one out. So you cannot preview some of the photo ones that are in there. And um, I, I let him know, and he actually requested that the people actually have a preview of the photo quotes now. Um, and I, I'm not downloading any of those since I can't see them. Because, you know, the picture's about, ooh, this is big. You, you can't read anything. So I just stick with the ones that I add that are readable quotes. Uh, some people put in things like uh, Oprah's quotes, you know, different oddball stuff like that. But I've had the most success success with the the uh, tweet jukebox and the ones that they created, the ones that were the initial two hundred quotes that they give you, and then the photographs, just the plain, really, you know, stock image, actually beautiful photographs. And when I put those in, when I first started this, I thought, oh, yeah, okay. I had more interaction from those photos and from the quotes than I ever thought. And that's where I began to get my first followers that were, you know, looking to, that saw these and they, they signed up. They, they started following. So people love quotes and they love the photos. And I had those cycle through at about, um, every three hours or so that a new quote comes up or a new photo comes up. And inevitably, you've got people that are retweeting it or favoriting it. And then I get new ones that pick up on it. And some are followers that, you know, I don't really, they aren't people that are going to be interested in my podcast, like some guy who does photography isn't. So um, let me show you. So this is my jukebox, and I want to show you in here. So this is the recent kind of what, what's been happening, the recent mentions. Okay, so you're seeing some of these that were, should be old posts. Like right here, we've got, I got episode three you know, in this third one. So these are my old ones that are coming back, the next one, episode 24. So people are retweeting and putting it out there, okay? And of course, the people that, Janet Mason, she, that was, an episode, that was her episode that I, that I did, so she's sending it out. And so you get all this interaction, which I think is just, it's fabulous what's happening with that. So, and then if you go into, let's say, um, if you went into my Twitter account, you would see, just looking on inside of the, um, the listings, if you go down the line, you can see all the ones that are the old posts that are cycling through, and that of the old episodes. So people are getting to see that again. And then people are retweeting those and favoriting those. So it really keeps all, it keeps your brand out there and keeps your episodes out there and everything. So, um, is there are there any questions about this that you have at all? Yes. How do you upload pictures? You said you showed the oh. spreadsheet. How do you upload pictures? So, okay. I'm just doing it here. Okay. So, if I go into here. All right, so I'm just going to, let's say I'm going to, I'm just going to edit this. So where I'm going to do it is I'm just going to add my photo in here. Okay, so I'm, I'm uploading one by one. Uh, yes, yeah, for that. You, which is why I do, because most of mine, if I added a photo, it would be way too big for the whole tweet. So I go ahead and afterwards, I'll add the photo, and if it's too long, then I'll shorten my wording up inside of my tweet then. Okay. And I'll take my like my featured image for my episode. That's what I usually put up inside of it. Or on some of the generic ones I have, 
you know, have you have you heard of the YouTube perspective? You know, yeah. subscribe here. I'll have then my um, my logo will be up on there. Okay. Yeah. So. So it's this. Does it sound like something that would actually? Do you feel like it's you can see it's something that would save you time? Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't. I mean, I don't think about it. every. On Thursday night, because my episodes come out on Friday, so on Thursday, I take my Excel sheet and I take what I already have and I just fill it in. I only do about ten different posts, and some are you can download them, look at them, and you can then delete it too. So you don't it's you don't have to keep it. Just trying to find the one, the ones that you're. It was this one that had the, I think, the offensive image that people didn't like. Okay, so like this one. And it also tells you you've already purchased it if you already have it downloaded. So I would stick initially with the ones that have that are the tweet jukebox symbol, um, just because you know exactly what they are. And I'm actually, from my um, music store, I had my intern, they, he created over 200 music quotes and so uh, they're allowing me, I can upload that into this jukebox store. So there'll be um, 200 different music quotes that'll be added to this within the next week. Once I figure out how to do that, that's a whole new thing. So, um, so like I said, you know, whatever interests people have, they add to it. Tim Ferriss, this stuff's in here. They got, I don't know what it is. You can rate them. Which I should have rated that some of those before I deleted them because you have to rate them once you download them. And uh, uh, some of those I would have rated probably a three because of the fact that people didn't know what they were. So uh, I'm just having a feeling with this few downloads, like 18 downloads, I don't know if it's the people who own these that are actually rating them. So it's funny that they have totally all five five star ratings. So. Um, and like I said, I don't know exactly what Tim is going to do as far as what the, uh, the payment system will be and how much. When it first came out in January, I noticed that there was one of the, um, one of the, the uh, payments was like 29 a month. Whether it's, whether it's that, I mean, and you were getting a lot of like unlimited jukeboxes and everything. So uh, I'm sure there'll be a free version, but again, it'll be limited, I believe, on the tweets, how many tweets you can send out, like per, per month or something, but I, I don't know exactly, but he'll, he's gonna roll that out come January. So it's worth at least trying for right now, from now to January, to have it for free, and realize that, you know, I, I, like I said, once I download these on Thursday, I don't have to worry about it. Come Monday, I then re-download that same file into the old podcast release, into that old one. And, and then I don't have to think about it. But then I have all that interaction from all of these, the different people and getting, I mean, to gain that 15 to 20 new followers each week, I'm just like, wow, this is, it's, it's effective. So, and you know who to interact with, too. So, um, any other questions that you might have about it? All right. Well, that's all for me. That's a, that's basically the tour through Tweet Jukebox. So, thank you. <laughs>